Hey guys, Sarah here. Hi, it's Lori. So this is a very special episode. We're on location. We are on location today in a cemetery. Isn't that exciting? It's so exciting. So we're sitting on this like little flat land just surrounded by beautiful graves. And what's the name of the cemetery? Crest Hill Cemetery. Crest Hill Cemetery in South Belchertown. South Belchertown. Massachusetts. And I even just walked over and I'm so excited because I see a zinc monument. It's like right in our view. It's very pretty. It's so exciting. And I'm sitting here in my witch hat and we're very comfy on this blanket. And we, today you guys, and the sun is going down. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's getting dark. And I don't know if you can hear the crickets, but the crickets are chirping. I hope, I hope you guys hear the crickets because it just makes us so much better. And, um... Occasionally you might hear louder noises because we are kind of near a road, but hopefully it doesn't doesn't get picked up too much. But we are here today, dun dun dun, to tell scary stories, real life, real scary life. stories, our own experiences that we've had with in the our paranormal, life. with the yes. paranormal. And oh god, I we came up with this idea, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I was just like, we need to do this, and I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but. I think it's gonna work it's working it actually sounds really really good and i kind of hope that we pick up maybe we'll pick up some voices oh an evp wouldn't <laughs> oh that be cool God. be like ghost adventures i'll probably never come to a cemetery again <laughs> if i do hear something i'm gonna say dude 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 bro do you see that ghost <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful here and i don't think cemeteries are any prettier than they are in the fall they're oh, just so beautiful the leaves are the all falling and it has this like you know in like the 1970s movies, it's just very like, almost has this orange hue mm -hmm. to everything, just very atmospheric. That's what it reminds me of right now. It's just beautiful. And this, this cemetery, I actually was kind of happy to see that um, there are some repairs being done. Hmm. Um, there are some, uh, you might see them in the pictures when we post pictures, there are some pink um, ribbons wrapped around some of the, some of the, the stones that are tilted and yeah. falling down. And it looks like my little town is going to do some refurbishing of some monuments, which is wonderful. Yeah, and I've never seen that before. It's mm -hmm. it's it's actually really well taken care of cemetery. It's very very clean. It is very clean. It's beautiful. Lots of pine needles. Lots of fallen leaves. It's so cute. Just cute. I'm just so happy to be sitting in the middle of a graveyard and just the sun going down. <laughs> the sun and, going down. And um, we're each going to tell some stories. And I'm promised in last week's episode that I would tell I would talk more about the house I used to live on yes. in Martin's on Martin's Pond in North Reading Massachusetts and not many people know these stories I do not tell these stories very often but um, I had some really interesting experiences there growing up if you know North Reading at all this particular house wasn't old However, it was built on land that Native Americans used to own at one point, and the the energy there was different, a lot different than I thought. So I don't know if you want me to just you just start. Dive right in. Okay, Whew. I'm like getting really like nervous because <laughs> I don't tell these stories often. So um, I forget which what I talked about last week. So I'll tell a little backstory. So this house, so my dad used to be an over-the-road truck driver, and we used to, with my mom, my older sister, um, and my younger brother lived at my grandparents' house. We lived in North Reading as well, and we lived on the other side of town. So when my dad moved home, we, um, or we stopped being over-the-road truck driver, we moved into this house on Martin's Pond. And... From my own perspective, my brother, sister, and parents might have a different perspective. I just felt like this house immediately, there was something different about it. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there goes a car. There goes a car. Playing music. And in the, be in the beginning, I think I was around 11. No, maybe like 10. And I just chalked it up to, I really loved living at my grandparents' house. I... You know, it was just different. Um, my whole life kind of changed. Mm -hmm. um, at that moment when we moved and so you know years go by my timeline on things is very off in this particular house but 
my sister and I used to live in the basement. So it's kind of like this two story house. Mm -hmm. um, it was like, it was like a put together house, kind of like a modular home, but not really. It had two stories, but it almost had two separate living areas mm -hmm. on the top floor and the bottom floor. My sister and I lived on the bottom floor. And so with that being said, over the years went by, I, I started just feeling this heaviness. Even when I was a kid, I maybe didn't have words for it, but I always felt energy. Um, I used to feel like I had ghosts visiting me or spirits visiting me at my grandparents' house. Um, I've seen my great grandmother who I've never seen before. I never met her. I remember seeing shadows on the wall, energy in that house too, but not like this. It's so hard for me to talk about this because it's like it's bringing me back. So as years go by, I become middle school teenager. I began having a really hard time sleeping at night. Which is a hard time anyway. I mean, yes. <laughs> and I actually had a lot of different challenges at the time with my health, with my mental health, physical health, things like that. And I had, and this is where the start of my insomnia started because at night I started having these experiences. And I guess I'll start with one night I woke up and I felt like somebody was sitting on the end of my bed. And you know, like if somebody sits on the blankets, you can kind of feel this like tautness, mm -hmm. you know? And I look up and there's nobody there, but I feel somebody sitting there. And I only had one blanket. This I very I remember very specifically one blanket on. It was a thin blanket. It was summer. And you can feel. I mean, I know you can feel the presence when somebody is near you. I don't know. It, yeah. It drives me crazy when people say they can't because you can. I can. I can feel it. Yeah. And it, it was almost like the, for me, I feel it in my ears, like the air pressure changes. And I was like, hmm. And I see the imprint mm. of like somebody's butt. And I see two hands, like an imprint, very specific. So somebody is there. Somebody's there. And so I probably, most of these times, I would force myself to go back to sleep. I would hide under my blanket. I would just will it away. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I was so scared I couldn't move. So that was one of the experiences. Um, another one at night. So it, it kept getting worse. That's the thing. I used to have to sleep with my light on. I used to have to sleep with my fan on. I could not sleep without my fan because at night I would hear people talking. Mm -hmm. I would hear whispers. I would hear knocks. I would hear people walking in my room. I in I, I could hear it. Chills. I could feel it, and I'm starting to tear up. Um, <laughs> and I, I would well, that's hear. Scary for anybody. I mean, imagine not being able to explain. I would almost yeah. rather wake up and see somebody standing there. And I did. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this man. is where this this is the big event I'm leading up mm -hmm. to. So um I would hear people walking up and down the stairs mm -hmm. and it's okay, so <laughs> one night I was sleeping and I woke up and same kind of air pressure change. Mm -hmm. Like I, I knew somebody was in the room. I knew and I used to sleep with my door closed very for good reason um because i would see my door move mm -hmm. and um and um oh my god my blankets were being pulled off of me from you physically look scared right now like your I'm, affect because i don't face, talk about it it's so scary your affect on your face is is scared the last time i told these stories was when i was so for a a little bit of time when I was a teenager, I ended up um, needing some help. So I ended up staying mm -hmm. in an um, institution for a while. I hate to call it institution, but it, it was a unit that they really helped me with my depression and stuff. But last time I told these stories was to one of my doctors. And they made me stay there a little bit longer. I'll just say that. So I don't even think I've told my mom this story. And she's probably listened to this being like, are you kidding me? <laughs> So that was another story. Yeah, Lee's gonna ha Lee's gonna want to talk to you. Yeah. Um, so to add to this too. Okay, I think that was the other one. So before I get to the person standing in my room, so other instances. I think I told this last time was I was walking down the stairs one day, and my brother, sister, and I had our portraits up. Mm -hmm. It was above our computer, and they flew off the wall. This is the middle of the day, too. 
they didn't fall. They they got ri- almost like ripped off the wall. Um, and the one instance that I remember the most specifically, and this, I think it was a few instances that I'm merging in my head as one, but I used to clean my room a lot. So I don't talk about this often either, but I have OCD. And I'm not just saying that, I'm actually diagnosed with OCD. I have these little, I have compulsive tendencies to make me feel like I have more control. Mm-hmm. It was worse when I was younger. So I would clean my room all the time. Control, yeah. I, I organized my room. I used to have actually this cool shelf that was built into the wall all along two sides of my room. Mm-hmm. I had a really big room. And I used to have my CDs, my candles, my ev- everything. Everything in its place. Everything in its place. Mm-hmm. And I remember spending hours cleaning my room. Because it would get really messy. And then I would be like, freak out and mm-hmm. I need to clean it. I went upstairs. I probably didn't get lunch or something. I came back down. Nobody's home, by the way. Nobody's down there. Nobody's home. And I came back and every single thing on my shelf was knocked off. And I closed my door because we had cats. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want cats in my room, so I always closed my door and I opened the door and stood there and saw everything on my shelves knocked off. Wow. Um, in the middle of the day. So the last part of this, last part of my experiences is the guy. Um, I called him the man in black because it's who I started imagining and feeling. Mm-hmm. It was a guy and it was very dark. It was just very heavy sad, angry, frustrated Mm -hmm. energy. And I woke up one day in the middle of the night, and this is when I actually started sleeping with my lights on. And this happened more than once, but this is the instance I remember is I woke up, opened my eyes, and there was somebody standing over me. It was tall. It, It looked like they were wearing a hat, like the man in the hat. And I was so frozen because it was like a mass almost but I could make it out and I just heard the air pressure change faster than I've ever felt and static in the air and I was so just I couldn't move Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk I just put the blanket over my head it was just like like please go away please go away and I took the blanket off and I looked again he wasn't right in front of me but he was across my room staring staring wow Um, I remember just getting up and turning the lights on and one of the reasons why I have insomnia so bad to this day is because of these experiences like I I now sleep with like blankets I actually burrito myself Mm -hmm. a lot of people I think it's like maybe part of like my OCD thing Mm -hmm. is I really like to be like secure when I'm sleeping but it's one of the reasons why I have trouble sleeping sometimes is I would say that would make sense I I always I have these ongoing things like somebody's watching me in my house. I, it adds into some of my OCD ticks I have before mm-hmm. I go to bed. Um, but I burrito, Carson calls it the burrito. Mm-hmm. And he like burritos me in and I, it's especially around my feet. Mm-hmm. My feet, even it could be a hundred degrees out, Lori, my feet have to be mm-hmm. covered, have to be covered. And to this day, sometimes I wake up thinking that he's there, or like thinking that somebody's standing over me. Um, you know, it, and it's <laughs> it's so interesting because it almost sounds like night terror. Yeah. You know how you how people say that they wake up and they're paralyzed and they see these dark people. Yes. It almost sounds like that, yeah. but it it I wonder if this energy because mm. you know we were talking earlier yeah, we were about talking energy earlier. and how our mind kind of combines with the energy and almost makes things like our worst possible nightmare it yes. fills in the gaps yes it does um, yeah when you're feeling energy your brain fills in the you physical gaps in. yeah and i wonder if this energy specifically connected to you for some reason. for what reason i i, I, mean, I know you're an empath so it's yeah. it's kind of inevitable inevitable in a way and that it's going to happen you know it haunted me for years mm-hmm. um but i gained control over that because I've had other energy related mm-hmm. experiences on other places too, but I, I think a lot has to do with the land because it, I never told my siblings or anything, but mm-hmm. um, years later I asked my sister, or maybe she brought it up about the door in her bedroom. Mm. The door in her bedroom, and I don't think my siblings believe in this or really talk about it, but 
there was a weird image mm -hmm. and it looked like somebody was screaming in the door of her bedroom and her bedroom had something something in it too and it wasn't until years later she's like yeah there was something wrong with that house and my brother has said the same years years later and talk about somebody who doesn't believe in any of the things we're talking yeah. about but years later I, he was just like yeah there was something and for some reason it manifested differently with you it physically manifested yeah, yeah. and it, it just kind of kind of lends it to the to the idea first of all that you're an empath but also that your brain Processed, Process, it processed it, it processed that way and your brain filled in the gaps yeah. to make your worst nightmare yes and like not being in control maybe mm -hmm. maybe that's your worst nightmare i believe there was an energy there that was dense mm -hmm. in the way it manifested mm -hmm. for me could have played off of some of the things i deal with you know mental health wise mm -hmm. um i don't I am 100% sure I wasn't hallucinating. I was not hallucinating no, what I saw. It, it, no, no. Um, you can't hallucinate blankets being... I mean, you can be hallucinated. Like, mm -hmm. my brain is not... You would need to be schizophrenic for that. Yeah, to which be, I am yeah, not. Exactly, I, yeah. That was a very physical and real yeah. thing. That was, what do you call it, an intelligent spirit? Yeah. Yes, yeah, an yeah. intelligent spirit. Yeah, and I don't think... It's hard for me to say that it wasn't malicious. Mm. I don't know. Because for, for me in that moment, it was. Yes. I don't, because they had plenty of opportunity to talk to me in a nice way if, if mm -hmm. they were Hi. there. Yeah. yeah. And I kept being like, you need to go, you need to go. And if it was me now, mm -hmm. I'd be like, you need to fuck off. Because yeah. <laughs> like, this yeah. is not, so I've learned to deal with this energy mm -hmm. over the time. It didn't follow me. You know, right. it, it's probably it maybe still you. there. It but mentally, it stuck with mentally me. It's, stuck with you. it's why I don't, it's why for many years I didn't talk about it. And here you go. And I probably will never talk about it again. So this is it. This is the recording. Wow. This is the um, recorded. This thanks is for the... listening. Whew. I feel relieved. And you know what's really yeah. interesting, like, with, you know, what, these types of things always happen outside of cemeteries. Mm. And I get so many questions about, well, have you ever had an experience Same. in a cemetery? Yeah. No, I've never had an experience in a cemetery. A cemetery is the least likely place to have some type of a paranormal experience because think about it if we're energy are we going to stay with our bone bag i wouldn't no of course no. not you're going to go to somewhere where you have a connection yes you don't have a connection mm -hmm. with a cemetery mm -hmm. you have a connection with people you have a connection with places yeah whether it's pleasant or unpleasant it might be the place where you died where you died yeah, yeah. but you're not going to stay in your bone bag in the cemetery so no i guess, I guess i've never had a paranormal experience and i don't know that I necessarily believe it when people tell me they have in yeah. a cemetery. In a cemetery. No, yeah. never. Like, I am sitting here, and I feel so, so safe. So safe, so relaxed. So relaxed. I feel like myself, I am just here. This is where I actually feel the most one with nature. And it's, and the <laughs> noise, I always tell people, I said, for an empath, I feel like in a cemetery, the noise stops. The moment I cross over yes. to, like... The if there's no the driveway. Of, there's no inner. There, there's no. You're not hearing conversations from people across the room. You're not hearing. It, it's quiet, and it's, it's the only quiet. place where it's quiet. It's like my heart doesn't feel heavy. Even telling these stories, I mm -hmm. feel safe. Yeah. Um, to tell them, and I'm gonna leave them here. Mm -hmm. This is the last time I'm talking about them, and That's, I feel so good about that. I feel protected, and I think with this particular story too, I think it was the land. I think yes, it used to be a bunch of farmland. I you never know when I, you're buried on or when you're you know I you when you're living on top of a cemetery you're people, a, a, you know uh you never know what you're living on top of no. a land where people were butchered a, yeah. a land where there were was intense sadness sickness mm -hmm. um actually you'd be safe if you were on top of a cemetery I totally believe that but um there's energy everywhere yes and it's just some absolutely. people are more and it's energy to it and energy doesn't die it only changes form yeah so very much with so. that being said yeah. you you know you hit an energy that attached itself to me. Yes. I was in a very vulnerable place, mm -hmm. and I, I think and that's, that's it, too. that's what they are going to attach to. They're going to yeah. attach to somebody who's vulnerable, mm -hmm. especially a malevolent spirit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I hate even, like, saying it that way, too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, I don't know. It just, to me, it feels bad. That's the verbiage I got. It's mm -hmm. like, like malevolent. Malevol Malevolent. Malevolent. Uh, that's a great word. <laughs> malevolent. I'm going to use that in a sentence tomorrow. Malevolent. And I only used it in a sentence. I don't know. I can't really say anything, but it felt dense. It felt mm -hmm. heavy. It felt like 
the burden of the world was on my shoulders when it was around. It was heavy. You could feel its presence when it was there and when it wasn't. Yes. The difference was, yeah. Yeah, the static in the air. That's and energy what... can energy can do that. Energy can be malevolent. It can be sad. It can be, I mean, if you think about all the times that you walk through, you know, like the state school property in Belchertown, there yeah. isn't, a, it's not scary. But oh, there no. is a sadness and a confusion and a scared yeah. energy there. Yeah. Um, it's not malevolent. It's, it's sad and confused. You're I getting agree. that energy off of that. But malevolent spirits prey on people who have some type of insecurity about them. And a teenager is the perfect person Oh, to my pray. God, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. I'm sure there's more than one yeah. at that time, you know? So, I, I mean, my story is very similar. Um... I've told this story several times, and I don't think I ever tell it without getting a lump in my stomach. Mm. Um, because up to that point, I had never experienced anything paranormal. Mm. Um, my husband and I, when we first moved to Massachusetts, um, we were living in Holyoke, which is, you know, a medium-sized, larger city in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Western Mass. And because we had a dog at the time, we had to rent a, an apartment that was not exactly as nice as we wished it had been because we yeah. couldn't find anybody that would allow dogs without this huge deposit. Hmm. So the place that we were living in was one bedroom and it was, uh, there was a basement where you went to do your laundry. You couldn't have laundry in your, in your house, in your apartment. Um, and these apartments were built back in the 70s. They were pretty nice. They'd been remodeled, taken care of and everything. It was a huge complex. Um, but they'd only been there since 1972. I'm not exactly sure it was there before. But um, right next door behind us was Pulaski Park, which was mm -hmm. not the greatest place to be found at night. No. After the sun goes down. Nope. Lots Probably still of not. <laughs> lots of shit went down there. Yeah. And they could have used our apartment as a, a place to do surveillance. Yeah. Yeah. And then next door was the Catholic school, Mater de la Rosa. Um, so we, you know, we were surrounded by, you know, places that we could, you know, go and, and felt pretty, it felt pretty safe for mm. Holyoke. It's not the safest place in the world, but it had a secure lock. It had a digital code and all that. So we're like, okay, good. We didn't plan on staying there forever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it sounded good at the time. So we moved in and we've been there for probably, I want to say a month or mm -hmm. so. And I was going to go collect the laundry and go downstairs and do the laundry. So I went downstairs with my big laundry basket, put it in the, um, put all the laundry in the washing machine, and I felt something, I mean, I felt something weird, but you know how sometimes you get a weird feeling and you just don't, yeah, you just don't pay any attention to it, and I floated back up the stairs to go watch TV or something, waiting for the laundry, so I come back downstairs, and the dog comes with me, and we get to the top of the steps, and the dog doesn't want to go in the basement. See, the dog always knows. He, he did, the dog oh, always knows. Obo did not want to go downstairs mm. into the basement. And he was a little dog. He was a little yippy dog, you know, kind of like a chihuahua. And he barked. And he, this dog never barks. And he barked. I'm like, this is weird. But of course, I'm like, oh, this is weird. I'm just going to go downstairs. <laughs> and so I turned on the light, went downstairs. He still wouldn't come down. He wouldn't wow. even follow me. I'm like, fine, dude. Wait up here for me. I'll be right here. I just got to switch it over to the dryer. So I switched the laundry over to the dryer, and I got that feeling again. Mm. But this time, I got chills. So I was facing the dryer, and something, my body would not move. My body would not allow me. I had to struggle with my body to get me to look where I felt like somebody was. Wow. And I, I mean, it really, literally, I was struggling with myself to turn. And I turned, and over in the corner where there was some hangers and a little rolling uh, laundry hanger thing, there was this big black blob. It didn't have eyes, and it was staring at me. You know how you can feel how some, someone's staring at you? Yeah. It was staring at me, and it didn't have any eyes. Oh, I just got chills all through my body. Ooh. And honest to God, Sarah, I felt, I heard the buzzing in my ears. Yeah. I heard it buzzing. It sounded like cornflakes or, or uh, yes. know, Rice Krispies. Yes. It popped and cracked. And it was the most angry thing I've ever seen in my life. It had no form. It was just a big, black, three to four foot blob mm. in the corner. And 
I couldn't move. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't make myself move as much as I wanted to run. I couldn't move. And the dog is upstairs going nuts, like growling, going completely nuts, but oh. wouldn't come downstairs. And I finally, like I struggled with myself, like I struggled before to turn around. I struggled with myself enough to be able to turn around. It was like there was some kind of force, almost like it, like it wanted me to walk toward it. And I got myself turned around, and I could not have, it's like a, a force broke, like a rubber band broke. Yeah, yeah. And I ran up those stairs. I could not have run faster up those stairs. Oh. And I literally oh. took my dog, took my dog, hid in my bedroom until my husband got home. And it's, I'm like, I'm getting the feeling right now. Yeah. That was the most I've ever been in the presence of something bad in my entire life. And I've seen a lot of, you know, things I've I've experienced a lot of things in my life and some were pretty terrible but there was nothing like the terrible this was it was a sickening angry malevolent pukey feeling and when I got upstairs and went in my room I was physically ill yeah. for a long time for you know way after Roger got home mm. and I had to tell him what happened and he went down there he's like maybe there's a bum downstairs or something like that like, no you don't understand <laughs> it wasn't a human it wasn't a human. It wasn't human. And it didn't even, I don't know that any human being could carry this much anger with it. It almost like it was a, almost like an, a combination of, of entities. Um, oh, interesting. But it was, it was just angry, raw, violent, malevolent anger. And had I, I don't know what would have happened if that rubber band hadn't broke that was drawing me toward it. But the rubber band broke. I don't know if that, my guardian angel was on my shoulder, but... This was as real as real can be. It was as real as that man that was standing over you. And I will never forget it as long as I live. I, I, I still have a hard time, and it sounds really silly, but being in a room by myself and looking into looking at corners, it just mm. brings me to this point where I feel it really took a toll on me. It, yeah, it it, it's, a, a, it's um, a trauma. Mm -hmm. It's a trauma. Yeah, especially when it affects your daily existence. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a trauma, and traumas are really hard to. And it was really, it was just, it was just energy. It was yeah. a big black ball of disgusting, yep. mean, malevolent, angry. I can't even call it angry because it was more than that. Yeah, yeah. And I would describe like how it physically made me feel. Mm -hmm. Like that's always where I go to. Like mm -hmm. it was heavy. Yes, it was heavy. It was like the air yes. got thick. And it's interesting too that you feel that or you hear to the static it's mm -hmm. like it's kind of it's like popping. it's like yeah it's like <laughs> popping we're in the country guys yeah we're in the country um it's kind of like you know when like i don't know if tvs do this now but when you used to turn off a tv in the 90s say you could still hear that it was on yeah. even when the screen was mm -hmm. off because it was still turning off that like static mm -hmm. almost like electricity yes. feeling. It's a lot like that, but a little more intense. Mm -hmm. And so, it drills into your ear. Oh yeah. It drills into your ears. And I hear that often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know when, I, sometimes I feel when something's around. And now, even, even telling these stories, I am not a believer. Mm -hmm. And I, I say that truly um, because there's so much evidence out there too that what I'm experiencing is I just heard something in the woods wow that was spooky that was so spooky is yeah <laughs> if I look over and start to hear something snapping and crackling I'm gonna be out of here I'm fucking done yeah I'm fucking done well we're almost done anyway but yeah, I forget what I was saying. But. No, but, but you're right. I mean, as much as I know that experience and I felt that experience, and as much as you did, I still have a hard time believing what I saw and felt yeah. and heard and experienced because it, it just seems so surreal. Yeah, but, and it's important to have a little bit of skepticism, mm -hmm. to not fully believe in something mm -hmm. because it always leaves that door open to keep learning. Yes, absolutely. And do I believe there was energy that was denser? And it, I would call it maybe a spirit. Yes, mm -hmm. fuck yeah. Yeah. That's what my That's experiences how I feel. was. Did I experience malevolence in its highest form? 
Yes, I did. Yep. And you know, I think the thing that I think the thing that brings it solid for me is that Roger believed me. Yeah. He. I mean, I said I'm going to tell you something, and it's going to sound really weird, but he knows me well enough to know that I'm not going to make something up. He's like, "Did you have a stroke?" I mean, that was his first. He's like, "Did you have a stroke?" Seriously. Process of elimination. Yeah. And I said, "No, I'm I'm fine. I, everything's fine." But he for to have another person embrace what you what you did really yeah. makes it real yep because you can always agree i can always go hey you know what i had a moment i had a moment yeah yeah i you know but when somebody else believes you and embraces it then you know what you it, felt was real it makes it feel a little yes. more real yeah oh man Lori. Woo, now we have to go home now we have to go home <laughs> and now it's like almost dark so mm-hmm. we're sitting here in the dark I have my lantern on. Still feeling safe, except for whatever was in the woods. Yeah. That's outside the boundaries, so. Yeah, that's outside the boundaries of the cemetery. Well, guys, thank you so much. I'm so glad. I thank you guys for listening because we trust you enough to tell you these stories and you know, we we feel very close close enough to you to trust you to tell you our deepest fears and and our experiences and we're so happy that you're listening to us. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't be doing this without you guys. And we appreciate all your love about all our October cast. Yay! Um, all these episodes. And as things keep moving forward, we're just going to... I'm sure we we're going to evolve. We have so many plans. We are full of surprises. You just wait. Oh, there's so many cool things happening that, you know, involves you guys, too, um, supporting us. And mm-hmm. it's just us being so grateful that people have been listening to us, which yes. is... It's so surreal. Um, it's going to be, yeah. an, it's, it's the Mindful Witchery Enterprise. We are. So we are taking over. Taking over. <laughs> taking over all, this cemetery first. All because of you. All because of you. Well, guys, I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day and evening and weekend. And or, go visit a cemetery at dusk. Yeah, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. See you later, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.